In this video, I will be reviewing an outstanding santoku knife from Graffiniti. Hello guys, I'm Chef Panko and I work in a Japanese restaurant. Make sure to subscribe if you want to know more about cooking and knives. Before we start with the review, I want to go over some disclosures. This knife has been sent over by Graffiniti for review. However, they are not paying me to make this video or to use the knife. And nobody gets the chance to preview any of this footage before it goes on YouTube. Now with the disclosures away, let's talk about the Graffiniti santoku knife. This knife is made in China and they are using an imported Japanese outstand core. The company is called Graffiniti and this knife is from their Pegasus series. For the full specifications, you can see it in the description below. This knife has 45 Damascus layers and a hammered finish with cantons on the sides. This helps with breaking down water content in certain foods so there is less resistance from the food in your cut. The Rocco hardness is around 61 during my testing. The handle is from a G10 material which does not require any maintenance. It is a filled tank handle with a mosaic rivet. The added griffin head on the end cap is a nice touch. The knife balance point is at the bolster which makes the knife slightly back heavy. So it is in line with most fusion knives. But because of the handle design the knife is optimally balanced for the pinch grip in front of the curved cap. And with the optimal balance I meant it is middle balance if you use the pinch grip of the curved cap. A pinch grip in front of the blade or logo will result in a back heavy knife which I don't like for a Santoku styled knife. The weight is something you should consider. At 262 gram, it is too heavy to be considered a Japanese fusion and leaning more towards a German chest knife in terms of weight. The spine has no distal taper which means that the thickness of the bolster is 2.2 mm and the thickness stays at 2.2 mm for the most part of the blade until it nears the tip. The knife has a good finish overall, no sharp edges on the spine or heel. There is no protrusion on the handle, everything is nicely flushed. The handle is made from a G10 material which does not require any maintenance. The knife is very sturdy and there is no noticeable flex during use. Despite the recommended gripping style, this knife is suitable for most gripping styles. The curved upper on the handle and the slight fish belly at the front of the handle makes the handle very comfortable to hold. The design of the handle and the blade creates enough knuckle clearance for all gripping styles. The profile in this Santoku from Graffiniti is the most interesting part. The Santoku profile they went for is a traditional Santoku profile, which is something that is rarely sold in the western market. I absolutely love the straighter profile of this Santoku and I'm happy that Graffiniti chose this profile for their Santoku knife. Since the primary cutting style is a forward push. Because of the forward push and a straighter profile you don't have to curve your wrist to make optimal contact with the cutting board. And another plus is that you can go as high as you want with the push cut. The only downside is the rocking motion on this knife. However, they have added a slight curve so that you are still able to rock on herbs. If you want to rock on food with more stack height, then you won't be able to rock since the tip will dig in your cutting board. The knife is very good, from the quality control and the extra details in the aesthetic. What did surprise me was the handle design. The wider upper, or what I call the upside down triangle and the curve, makes it very comfortable. The fish belly at the front makes it ideal for a pinch grip at the bolster and support the fingers around it. The design and comfort of the handle is great and I'm glad that they thought about the comfort of the handle design. The choice of using a traditional Santoku profile is unwelcome for me and I hope that more manufacturers will go for a more traditional profile. The only thing I wish that they had included was a spine distal taper. The knife is performing very nicely but with the extra spine distal taper it would make the knife lighter, thinner and it will wedge in food better. However, they have added grantons to help with the lack of the spine distal taper. If it wasn't for the spine distal taper and the weight of this knife, it would have been the perfect Santoku knife. Since it have everything that I expect from a Japanese fusion chest knife. Great quality control and a Japanese outstand that performs amazing and a G10 handle that does not require any maintenance. The extra detail to the handle design makes a knife very comfortable to hold and currently it is one of the best handles that I have used on a Japanese fusion. The weight of the knife is something you should consider. It is considered heavy for a Japanese fusion and its weight is leaning more towards a German knife. The knife core material is suitable for all cooks, like home cooks or cooks at a professional kitchen. Just keep in mind not to cut through frozen food or bones with it. An hour stand is also recommended for people that want to transition to a Japanese knife before committing to a traditional Japanese knife with a high carbon core material, which is more brittle and prone to chipping. That's it for this review. If you have any questions, feel free to ask it in the comment section below. And if you disagree with my review, please leave your feedback in the comment section so that we can help others in their decision. If you want to know more about cooking and knives, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and I see you in the next video.